Hey mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I am scouting for morel habitat. This is one of the first days that has a real attitude of spring to it in the North Carolina Piedmont. And so, um, you know, I'm out and about looking at uh, different sort of wintertime mushrooms, but also looking for places where I may, uh, you know, hope to find morels uh, a little later in the year. So I'm gonna be looking primarily in April and May. You really want uh, the weather to be nice and warm and wet. Uh, and then, you know, after morel season, you have uh, sort of what I call proper mushroom season, which begins in June and it just runs until, uh, you know, winter time really comes around. And so I can, I'm going to talk to you about sort of what to expect in the next few months, what you can uh, look for in finding morel habitat. And I also want to, um, before I do any of that, talk to you about the mushroom that I found today that I'm the most delighted by. This is Trichaptum biformi. This is an adorable little mushroom that is called the violet tooth polypore. So, uh, you know, from the top, it looks very similar to uh, Trimedes versicolor, the turkey tail mushroom, uh, which is very familiar to many people who hunt mushrooms. Essentially, it's this little, uh, you know, um, not really woody, like kind of corky and a little bit, uh, you know, difficult to, to rip apart, little mushroom that has pores underneath it. So, you know, that's where the, the spores come from. And, uh, you know, the top of the uh, Trichaptum biformi looks a little bit similar. It tends to be a much lighter color. So, you know, you'll see it has a little bit of concentric growth zone activity that looks like a turkey tail. But then, you know, when you flip it over, you have these uh, sort of adorable little teeth that, uh, you know, take on this uh, purpley color that, here, let me flip you over. What's the best orientation for you? There we go. So, you know, you have these adorable little purple teeth. And uh, so this is a mushroom that's a really good representative of something that I really appreciate in the wintertime mushroom season, because, you know, in June or July or even October, I might not spend a lot of time looking around, uh, you know, at these smaller uh, fungi. But, you know, this one in particular is really quite pretty, uh, especially because of that sort of lilac uh, tinging and coloration is really something. I'm not getting the very best view of it. It's a little bit on the subtle side. So, uh, let's talk about morel habitat. Before we do that, I'm going to have a sip of water. Delightful. So, um, I am going to start by saying I stink at uh, hunting morel mushrooms. I usually find anywhere between two and five of them per year. They are the species Morchella diminutiva. So uh, diminutiva is exactly what it sounds like. There are these little mushrooms. They're kind of, um, you know, a uh, like, you know, pale blonde color, uh, essentially, but they don't grow very large. And uh, so, you know, I find a few of those. The mushrooms that people are really after in this area that are the, the large, um, you know, morel mushrooms or Morchella esculenta or the excellent uh, morel. This is a species that's also way more common in the Midwest, but, uh, you know, nonetheless, we do have, um, you know, some morel mushrooms that are worth looking for. And the places that you'll find them are um, what I would describe as squishy. So essentially you have, uh, you know, a forest floor that has a little bit of give, um, tend to have a good bit of, uh, you know, ground cover and little green plants. And uh, right now, you know, that hasn't started to happen yet. I'm sitting right by a creek bed. And uh, so, you know, oftentimes areas that have ample moisture and, uh, you know, a, a, a good bit of ground cover is what you want to be looking for. Um, additionally, you know, morels have relationships with specific trees. And the one that I am the most, um, you know, interested in is the tulip poplar. So I have a couple of them behind me right here. This is probably the best representative one. So the main thing about tulip poplars that's just really recognizable is that they're just straight as a son of a gun. So, you know, you see um, a, uh, a oh gosh, I wanted to call it a stem. <laughs> um, you see a trunk that is just very, very straight and not a lot of branches come, uh, you know, off of the, uh, the, the sort of um, the bloom of them until you're fairly far up. And so, you know, these are trees that you see oftentimes uh, sort of along the side of small creeks. And they're, again, very straight. They have also um, a very vertical cracked bark that is really recognizable. You have some oaks that have some similar bark. And then, you know, occasionally toward the base 
of um, the, uh, you know, uh, the trunks of the tulip poplars, it'll start to crack apart, like these vertical uh, scales will, you know, crack. And so it looks a little bit oak-like. So if there's any ambiguity, you can look for how straight it is, um, because there are really, you know, very, other, very few other trees that look like it. And they, again, like to nestle up on the side of little, um, you know, creek beds and so forth. Uh, additionally, of course, you can look for uh, the um, leaves of the tulip poplar. So that's where it gets its common name. It basically looks a good bit like a tulip. So you have, uh, and you know, this is a, obviously one from last year. So they turn a sort of reddish brown color. But what you have is a fairly simple leaf that has a couple of lobes right here and here. And it just sort of is like vaguely trapezoidal. And, uh, you know, during the season, there are really lovely, uh, you know, spring green, really light green. So they're very, very pretty. And um, they also flower. It's a really, they're, they're an elaborate and, and really, really uh, lovely tree. But, uh, you know, again, the easiest way is like straight tree and it has these uh, tulip shaped leaves. Uh, on the subject of leaves and on the subject of other things that I'm looking for in preparation for mushroom season. So um, in the sort of lowlands where I live in the Raleigh area, I start to find chanterelles usually um, in the first or second week of June, again, depending on the weather. And uh, so I'm looking for oak groves right now. And those are areas I'm going to come back to and investigate and see if I can find some chanterelles, but other mushroom species as well. So oak groves are really an abundant place. I also like uh, areas where there's a lot of beach. And so I am going to show you how to, um, you know, identify those trees by uh, leaves. So oak, uh, we have two different varieties. I am not an expert, by the way, like all the caveats, I'm just using common names. So we have two different main groupings of uh, oaks. So we have red oaks and we also, let's see, where did I put them? Oh my gosh, I lost my white oak. Oh, here we go, here we go, here's another one. Okay, so you have red oak and white oak and uh, you know, they are similar in a lot of respects. So you have, a, uh, you know, a leaf that tends to be, and in almost all cases, is longer than it is wide, and you have multiple uh, lobes and spokes, essentially. Now, the difference between a white oak and a red oak is that uh, white oak has uh, rounded uh, tips, and then red oaks of various species have, uh, you know, pointy bristled tips. So they have these uh, little adorable bristles right at the end. So these are, you know, two, if you're in an area that has a lot of these leaves, this may be good habitat for chanterelles. Uh, also a good place to, um, you know, maybe keep an eye out for hedgehog mushrooms. A lot of our boletes that are big spongy fellows and they're really fun, have a lot of cool colors, etc. cetera. They, um, uh, many of them favor uh, oak. And so they're always good to look out for. Another uh, good mushroom tree that I've already mentioned is the beech tree. And so this is a beech leaf. This is probably the simplest of the leaves that I know how to identify. And we're getting toward the end of that list, to be honest. Uh, but you know, you have a simple leaf that has a little bit of serration on the edge. And then these, uh, you know, sort of um, almost like uh, uh, sergeant stripes, uh, essentially. And it's a little bit uh, felty and fuzzy on the top and smooth on underneath. It becomes very papery and oftentimes these uh, leaves decompose really rapidly compared to oak leaves, which have a little more, uh, you know, muscle and might to them. So uh, in conclusion, I'm going to see if I can get one more like opportunity now that the sun isn't right on me to get the purple of Trichaptum biformi, the, uh, you know, violet tooth polypore, that's slightly better. Um, and, you know, let you know that basically morel season don't stress out if you don't find any there are so many people that uh, you know really stress out that they're never going to be good at mushrooming if they don't find morels and guess what like morels are just a little bit temperamental you don't find them in the same place every year necessarily and um you know either way i encourage you to get out and find those habitats that have the cool trees and all of that and then come back in june july august september October, oftentimes parts of November and December. As you can tell, there's a lot of time and a lot of variety uh, throughout the year. So uh, anyway, I hope to run into you in the woods and um, maybe you'll have better luck with morels than I typically do.